guys, welcome to my June 3rd DVD update. When I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the past probably two, two and a half weeks or so, like I said, I'm really trying to keep these things every two weeks, and I'll do, you know, select standalone reviews for some titles coming up and things like that. But anyway, though, the first movie I got is from Warner Brothers, and it's Journey to the, Journey to the Mysterious Island, which is the follow-up to Journey to the Center of the Earth, the one with Brendan Fraser. Now, this one has the same kid from, you know, the Journey to the Center of the Earth, and it's basically he ends up getting a message, you know, that he intercepts. It's from his grandfather who's been missing, you know, who's basically an explorer too, like his uncle, who was played by Brandon Fraser in the first film. And him, he basically tries to, you know, tap onto the signal, figure out what it says. He's having a really hard time figuring it out. And his stepfather, played by The Rock, helps him intercept it. And they end up figuring out what it says, and they end up figuring out that, you know, basically that they're the coordinates to the island where the grandfather is. And, you know, The Rock's character doesn't really believe him, but he, but he kind of really wants to get along with his son, because they really haven't gotten along very well with each other. So then, you know, he's like, okay, I'll take you out there, we're going on this adventure together. Because, you know, the family knew that, you know, he's done stuff like this in the past, the kid, and, you know, he's not just crazy, you know, he, they've actually, you know, gone to, you know, to the center of the earth and things like that. So basically, though, you know, they go there, and they end up getting in a real crappy plane, and Louis Gozman, who is, you know, in waiting, and I've always loved that. He's a great character actor, and his daughter is Vanessa Hutchinson in it, and they end up taking a plane and end up basically going out to the middle of the ocean and end up sucked into the island. So you end up waking up on the island, and basically everything's kind of reversed on the island. So things that are, you know, big on Earth are a giant there. So like, at first I wasn't sure if it was like going to be dinosaurs, because I didn't know a ton about this movie. Um, but it's like basically everything on Earth, but big. And I really, I really enjoyed this one. I know there's also a 3D version of it out. This one I really would recommend. I thought it really was a fun movie, and I liked it a lot more than I thought. It's, um, I actually liked it a lot more than the first movie. And it's them, you know, trying to find a way out of the island because, you know, basically they find out that the island is going to sink, and that's why they're trying to get off. Right when they get there. That's the biggest problem. Michael Caine plays the um, grandfather, and they have to try and figure out how they're going to get off this island before it's too late. So definitely would check this one out. The next one I got is some um, catalog titles of Clint Eastwood films. This one I had never seen before. It was a really good one called A Perfect World with Kevin Costner and um, Clint Eastwood. And it starts off with Kevin Costner and an inmate breaking out of jail. And, they, you know, they basically, they tunnel through the wall, and um, they end up looking for a car nearby. And the person that, that Kevin Costner's with is, very, like, pretty crazy. He's, instead of, like, looking for the car, he ends up going into a house, and things get out of hand, and he ends up, you know, to the point where they end up having to take a hostage, which is this little kid. And it's Kevin Costner and the little kid and the other inmate all, you know, on the road. And, um... The family, though, that he kidnaps the boyfriend is like Jehovah's Witnesses. So this kid is very shelter sheltered. You know, this happens on Halloween night. He's not allowed to trick or treat. And throughout this movie, the kid is like, you know, you know, gets along really well with Kevin Costner's character because he's allowed to do things that he never was allowed to do. And it's almost like he becomes the father because you don't see the father in the beginning of the film. And I don't want to ruin all the details about this, but it basically, though, is them on the run and Clint Eastwood in this um, trailer, you know, full-on trailer, I think, with, like, the FBI or something, and they're all trying to track down him and the boy. And, um... I don't know, I really, really like this one a lot. I think that this was a really... I would say this is one that I don't think that many people know about, like one of the Clint Eastwood movies that I don't hear people talk about too much. But this is definitely one to check out. Really good. You know, it's pretty sad too, but I really like this a lot. And you end up, you know, really liking Kevin Costner's character. You know, I've always liked Kevin Costner. I liked him in Waterworld. You know, a lot of people didn't like that. I love Dragonfly, which no one talks about. This one, though, definitely check this out. The next one I got is another Clint Eastwood movie, and this one, he's the lead in this one, and it's Blood Work. And it starts with Clint Eastwood in the beginning of the film, and he's, you know, you know, on a, you know, where, where a murder just happened. And he ends up seeing the guy, you know, on this scene, just kind of peeking around, and thinks, uh oh, this is probably the guy that's doing it. So he ends up chasing him down, and ends up having a heart attack, you know, on the way. It cuts to three years later, and Clint Eastwood has just had a 
I think it was three years later. I can't remember if it was one year or three years, something like that. It was like a year or so later, and he ends up getting a heart transplant. And when he goes home, you know, he's like healing up, and um, it turns out, though, that the heart, the woman, you know, the, it's the sister of the person who gave Clint Eastwood the heart is there, you know, trying to get Clint Eastwood to solve the murder of his of her sister. So Clint Eastwood is trying to figure out who, you know, who killed the person who gave him the heart, you know, because she was a donor and things like that. So it's along the way, you know, trying to find the, um, figure out, you know, who did it. And this was a really good one. Jeff Daniels is in it and was really good in this. Because, you know, Jeff Daniels, you know, sometimes you see him in, you know, comedies like Dumb and Dumber, and he does some dramas and things like that. He was, like, really good in this. This, though, really was a good movie where, you know, you don't know who it was. And, you know, I, I always like Clint Eastwood. I, I hope he does more acting roles because he's just cool. Like, as he's thinking about him, he's just so cool. And it's cool trying to see him trying to solve this thing because he's an older guy. And he basically was retired, comes out of retirement, like, not even officially to help this because he feels, you know, he has to help because he has her heart and he's only alive because of it. And along the way, his doctor, and it was, who was the doctor? It was Angelica Houston's like, you shouldn't be doing this. I can't, you know, keep you as my patient if you're going to be doing this. You're risking this heart and things like that. This is another one they'll definitely check out. The next one I got, this one I saw in theaters and liked this a lot, Man on the Ledge. And um, I haven't gotten to watch it again. But though it's basically, you know, a guy on the ledge who's basically was accused of a crime that he says he didn't commit. And he's on the ledge why his friends are doing something across the street in the building. Then I don't, I don't want to ruin you know, what's going on, but he's basically, they're there doing something to try and prove his innocence. And um, that's basically the main thing, though. This one I like, though. The next one I got is Daniel Radcliffe film, The Woman in Black, which was a really creepy movie. I, you know, when I saw it in theaters, there's a lot of teenagers in there kind of laughing and not really understanding it. I think it was, I, I kind of think it should have been rated R, and I think that kind of would have alleviated that crowd that were kind of just Harry Potter fans. Because, you know, I thought he did a really good performance. You know, I've read, some people said that he wasn't that good and he was just all right. I don't know, I know this is a remake, which I have not seen the original one. I think the original is on DVD for like a hundred bucks or something. I did want to watch it though. But, um, it's basically him and he goes to the house where, I don't know exactly what happens. He goes to, um, go into a house and try and like go through these papers because he's working in a law firm and when he's there he starts seeing weird things and there's really cool shots too of the water around him and you know it's made by I think it was I don't know if Hammer did yeah Hammer produced this and it definitely has that old school vibe you really feel like you're watching a 70s movie like the Gene Rowland things I've talked about recently it definitely has those kind of shots and things like that and you know out of these kind of haunted house movies this is really one of the better ones I've seen in a really long time the next one I got is a Disney movie um, the best place I found this for the price was I think Best Buy and it's the Secret World of Arietta. And, um, you know, it's the company that did, I'm trying to remember that, their other one they did, like, Spirited Away, which I really liked. And I don't really like a lot of anime things, but I really do like their stuff. And they really do have good, cool stories, and it's basically the story of the borrowers. And it really was a sweet, you know, very sad movie in some parts, too. What's funny, though, is um, when they dub this, you know, they, of course they have the English dub, but they also have a dub from, you know, England, or, you know, the UK, that's different actors, which is like, I would like to actually hear that one too, because it's kind of weird. I've never really known them to do that, where they just have British actors do the one for, you know, Europe, and then it's just kind of weird. I've never seen that done. The next one I got is from Magnolia Films, and it's called Goon, and it's the movie that a lot of people like when I was talking about the American Pie, the new one, a lot of people brought this one up, and it's the Sean William Scott, you know, movie I think he did right before American Pie, and it's got that leave... Schreiber, you know, I think best known from, you know, the Scream movies. The basic idea, though, of the movie was Sean William Scott, though, is kind of a guy who works at a, as a security guard. He really doesn't like his life. You know, he really, you know, everybody around him is doing big things. His friend is on this TV show. Everybody has things going for him. His father really wants him to, you know, figure out what he wants to do with himself and really isn't that proud of him. His father's play, played by Eugene Levy. And, um, 
he ends up going to a hockey game with his friend, and he starts getting in a fight with one of the players, and it's just like kind of a local thing, and he starts beating up one of the players, and the player starts beating him up, and they all kind of see what's going on, and see that he can take these extreme punches to the head, and things like that. So then he ends up getting recruited to the local team, and from there, he ends up getting moved to a real team in Canada, and the coach is played by the guy, which, you know, I've never taken notice of him until lately, and he's been in movies for years, but, you know, he's the guy in Waterworld, you know, paper, you know, paper, paper for the women, women for the paper, let's make a trade for the paper, all oh, the girls, the women, let's have it for a minute with the bear, with the women, and, you know, I'm sure you all know that scene from Waterworld, the most standout, memorable scene in the entire movie, the paper scene. But all in all, though, it's basically, he doesn't really even play hockey. You know, he's basically there to beat up the other players, you know, that are doing well, or the people that are, you know, basically going to cause the, you know, the other team to win. So he basically is there to just take punches and beat the shit out of everybody. And that's really his main thing. And, you know, I don't know a whole lot about hockey. And I don't think you have to, like, like hockey. It's kind of like the, um, you know, some of the other sports movies, like Little Giants and things like that. Even if you didn't like you know, sports and things like that, you could still like this. And this really was a good one. The only thing I do wish was that Eugene Levy had a little bit more part time in it, as I've always loved what he does. The next one I got is some titles from, um, from Mill Creek. The first one is White Squall, which is a Ridley Scott film. This one was about Jeff Bridges and a group of these, he basically was a teacher that taught sailing. So it's a group of these kids that went out sailing and um, it's got a bunch of people in it. Who, who was in it? it was, um, um, was a, I'm trying to remember. They don't list it on the thing, but it was like the, the one, I'm trying to remember, the one from Dutch and um, Jer Jeremy Sisto and a bunch of like people who really went on to have really big careers. And it's basically though him out there with these boys and trying to train them and you know teach them about their life and things like that. I don't know, I thought this was a really good one. Uh, the one thing, though, the trailer, I wouldn't watch the trailer if you haven't seen the movie. kind of ruins things. I, I kind of think, I, I kind of feel like the trailer showed you stuff that you wouldn't have known, you know. It, like, you know what I mean? I, I just felt like don't watch the trailer for this one. But this was good. This one I just finished watching last night. And it's um, Born Yesterday with John Goodman and Melanie Griffin and jo Don Johnson. You know, Don Johnson was recently in, you know, Bucky Larson. I know no one liked it. I, I really enjoyed it. But it's um, John Goodman, he's basically in Washington. No, it was Washington, I think it was Chicago. And he's talking to the senators because he has this mall thing that he built. And he's worried at the base, which I guess it's like all the base people that will go to it, the army base. And he's worried that the senators are going to close it down. So he's basically there to try and petition to keep the base, you know, keep the base open so he doesn't lose his job, you know, lose the company. And Melanie Griffith is sort of his girlfriend, but they really don't get along, and, you know, he really mistreats her, and they're at parties, and she doesn't really know what she's talking about. She doesn't know anything about political things like that. So, um, you know, John Goodman ends up hiring Don Johnson's character to try and teach her things, and it doesn't end up going well for John Goodman. You know that from the trailer. This really was a good one, though, and really, you know, you really, you know, normally like John Goodman in movies. You, he's a real bad person in this. And he was kind of like he was in Barton Fink. The next one I got, and this is one that a lot of people didn't like, and I've always kind of, I've always kind of liked this one, and it's Eddie Murphy and Holy Man with Jeff Goldblum. And it's basically Eddie Murphy is pretty much God, and he ends up coming to this sort of failing um, TV channel, kind of like a QVC, and he's basically there, and they kind of end up exploiting him to try and keep the keep things going well because he's really good talent for the TV and he's really good at selling things and that's the main I, basic idea of this thing but I, you know I know it has kind of mixed reviews and things like that the director of it though did the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure I don't know this is just one I've always liked you know I know a lot of people like have things against Eddie Murphy some of his stuff in the last like 10 years 15 years people have not really loved it I really like Eddie Murphy and have really never hated anything he's done the last one I got from, no, no, there's a couple more from Mill Creek, um, DOA, which is a Dennis Quaid movie, and Crank was a little similar to this. Um, it was basically Dennis Qu Quaid ends up um, woken up poisoned, and, you know, he goes, he's still sick, and he, you know, he's out partying the night before, he was at the, at the bar, and um, he ends up going to the doctor, and he's like, oh, 
this is not good because he works in it. He's a teacher at a school, and um, you know he ends up basically poisoned. They're like, you know, you're going to die, and there's nothing we can do. The poison's in your system. So it's him the whole movie trying to figure out who did it. And it's you know, cranky. You know, it wasn't exactly like that, but a similar kind of vibe to it. And it's actually the director, as far as I know, that did Super Mario Brothers. I know another one people didn't like, but. Um, I don't know, this one was good, and Daniel Stern was really good in this. Daniel Stern's another person that I would love to see do more stuff. I've always been a fan of him, and he's really cool in this one. The next one, and this is one that I've talked about a lot in the past, and it's Joe Pesci and Danny Glover and Gone Fishing, and it's a movie about basically just them going fishing with all these kind of problems that happen along the way, like problems with the boat, you know, problems with where they're staying. Um, this was a really fun one. Like, I always really have liked Danny, you know, Danny Glover. And I like him doing comedy stuff. Now, he doesn't very few comedy. Like the Saw movie, I, I, I kind of really wish he could have been in more of them. And, um, like, people kind of forget that he was in them because they made so many. And, you know, Joe Pesci is great. And, you know, he doesn't do much stuff either anymore. But this was a really funny one. You know, it's not for everybody, but I really like this. The next one, and this one was just okay. It was with Ellen, and I, and I, I think I watched this one in the past when it first came out. So with Ellen and Bill, Bill Pullum, and it's called Mr. Wrong, and it's Ellen ends up, you know, her sister's just gotten married, and you know, Ellen, you know, the family's giving her all this crap, like when are you gonna get married? When are you gonna settle down? So she ends up meeting this guy finally. And, you know, things go really well. He seems like the perfect person. The family loves him. Everybody likes him. And when they're in the car back, he's like, oh, man, I, I really faked that really good and all that. And she's like, what, you were faking it? You were faking acting like that? And he was like, oh, yeah, I was doing that, you know. I hate having to fake things and make people like you and stuff like that. So then she's like, oh, well, I don't want you to fake things around me. I love you. I want you to be yourself. As soon as she says that, he becomes, a, oof. Like, what he, the way he is is horrible. His true side comes out, and then it becomes awful. And, you know, for her and things like that. The next one I got from Sony, and this comes out the 12th, is Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. And it's the sequel to the Ghost Rider film in 3D. And it's, um, you know, basically, you know, I saw the first one um, when it first came out, and I don't know a whole ton about superhero movies. Like, I know pretty much about, like, Batman and things like that, just because I've seen all the Batman movies. And, no, you know, I saw some of the cartoons as a kid. This one I never knew too much about. Always liked the character, though, as a kid. And this one, you know, they did a better job, I thought. Like, I really liked how they did the skull in this that had, like, some, you know, color to it. Because in the first one, it was just pretty much white. Um, but the basic idea, though, if you've never seen the Ghost Rider things, is... Uh, Nicholas Cage sold his soul to the devil and ends up basically possessed by a demon. So anytime he's around like bad people or things like that, he turns into the fire Ghost Rider character and has to you know take the soul of the person. So in this one, he's a monk comes to him and says, "You need to keep this kid protected." So it's basically him trying to protect this kid along the way. And like I said, this was okay. It's by the guys that did the Crank movies, so it has their kind of style to it and some of those quick cuts and the fades and stuff like you you can tell from watching this that it's their kind of movie. But like I said though, it's worth watching you know, if you like superhero movies, but um, I didn't absolutely love this one. The next one is from Comedy Central. This is a really funny show um, called Workaholics. It's about a group of these friends who are all living together in this um, like kind of like a frat kind of house. And they all work at a um, you know, this kind of office building. It stems through all their kind of hijinks and things that are going on there. It kind of has like a vibe um, of office space and the office and those kind of shows. And um, like it opens with them, you know, having a drug test at the job and they have to, you know, all are stoners so they don't know what they're going to do. So they have to try and figure out what to do to, you know, pass this test. And they're going through all these different ways and things like that. It also has like all these great references to 90s shows and like, you know, Double Dare and Mark Summers and things like that. You know, all in all, though, this is a really fun show. Like they were also camping out in the office and things like that. Like this is one of those shows where you start watching it, you can just keep going with it. And it's, you know, it's definitely, you know, for like modern audiences. You know, people, I would say like, you know, born, like I saw one review when they were saying people born like, after, you know, around 85 and up and things like that, it, you would really get the references. And it has a lot of that kind of stuff. Now on to the DVDs. 
The first one I got, and you know, I switched the cover. It says that thing like Katrina's Nightmare Theater on it. And it's Bill Paxton in Mortuary. You know, Bill Paxton, I don't think Bill Paxton's been in too many horror movies. But this one is Bill Paxton. I mean, I don't want to like ruin anything about what happens in it. But basically, it's someone who's killing people off with um, embalming equipment. And Bill Paxton is really cool in this. And like, I'm sure this is one of those movies, though, that he does not want to talk about. You know, he brushes this under the carpet and doesn't speak about it. But I'm just going to say it's a slasher movie and, you know, really, really was good. And in here, it shows that one of the ones coming up is Death Ship. So I don't know when that's coming out, but that was a really good one. Um, now the next ones are from Enter Bay, and it's the... I'm sorry, I'm just checking the camera to make sure the battery doesn't die. It's the sixth, you know, sixth season of Gene Simmons of Family Jewels, Volume 1 and 2. And, um, you know, this, this season, this part one, was all about Gene Simmons going through all kinds of marital problems. And, you know, he well, not married. He wasn't married yet. Going through all these kinds of problems with Shannon and, um, you know, there's no Sharon or Shannon. I think so. I can always mix up the names. But um, but it's basically a reality show that follows around Gene Simmons and his family. And, you know, but they're having all kinds of, you know, issues. And she's acting like she's going to leave Gene and things like that. And you don't really know what's going to happen. But, you know, this, the follow-up season, though, is them planning the marriage, you know, getting married. And the thing that's funny about that is, um, you know, he was always all against getting married and stuff like that. And, you know, shows like that, you never know how much stuff is real. But it seemed like there was a lot more real stuff in this season. Because, you know, all reality shows have, like, plots and ideas, you know, to keep things going. Because otherwise, like, what would happen? But I think this is a fun show. It's kind of like the Osbournes, but a little bit more straight-laced. And this is one that I think Wet Movie 1 was who got me into watching this show. But this really is a fun show, though. And the new season just started up. The next one I got is from um, MPI, and it's A Necessary Death, and it's from the director of The Last Exorcism, and it's done as a found footage, or not exactly found, but more like real footage, and out of all the found footage kind of films, the acting in this was some of the best. Like, this really, when I first started watching it for the first, like, ten minutes, I'm like, is this real? I'm like, could they possibly have actually done a real one? But then I looked it up, and it was the last exorcism guy. Um, yeah, sorry, it's a bit hooted here. But um, it's basically, though, about him making a documentary for school for his final grade. And he, his idea is to follow around someone who is going to commit suicide. It has a date, has it all set in stone. But the school really doesn't like the idea, and they're not so sure about it. And he runs into all these problems along the way. And, but I don't know, this was one of the best of these found footage ones, and I don't want to ruin anything about it, I don't ruin what happens, but I really, really like this one, I would really recommend this. And if you liked The Last Exorcism, which I really did, definitely watch this as well, but this is all, you know, shot so realistic, and it's not basic, it's not like the documentary itself, because it's basically a guy following around the guy who's making the documentary. So you never really see footage of the documentary itself. You see what's going on and behind the scenes of it and all the problems he runs go, and, you know, into. And like I said, though, this really feels so much more real than some, some of the other ones. The other ones I just got from Shout Factory are the, you know, second and third season of Hey Dude. And, you know, this show it has a similar vibe. It was on Nickelodeon, I think it was like 1989 to 91. And it was one of the earliest Nickelodeon, like, sitcom kind of shows. You know, because they, I think they, right after this, did Salute Your Shorts. I think so. And they had, like, one or two other, like, sitcom shows going on at the same time. But the basic idea, though, with this one was it was kids that worked on a dude ranch, all teenagers on a dude ranch. And people would come to the ranch and, you know, they would, like, teach them things like that. And it had, like, all kinds of lessons, kind of like Full House. Like, you'd always get taught something about this. The third season had one episode on there when they were all, you know, the one was trying to try out for the Brain Busters, this game show nearby. And he was being all crazy superstitious about things and all these things about the panning. The thing that's cool about this show, too, is... It, you know, I, I was born in 85, so, like, I knew some of these references. Like, the one kid was wearing a rude dog in the dweeb shirt and things like that. Like, it really, like, watching this felt like, you know, stepping back into, like, you know, the preschool, or, you know, or kindergarten, things like that. It was like, that's what I love about these kind of things. It's like a total step back. The same thing with, when you watch things like Full House 
because you know you like you know since I was the same age as the twins and stuff, like everything they were playing with the toys and stuff like that. It's the same kind of thing with this show. Now the next one I got is Lance Link Super Chimp, where the whole show is all monkeys. Um, as far as I know, it's all monkeys, and it's that monkey, um, you know, playing a you know a agent trying to solve the crimes and things like that. And the one thing about this DVD is all, like, a portion of the proceeds actually go to Lance Link. And, you know, in his habitat where he's staying, you know, where they put retired animal actors, which I think is pretty cool. I think I got this years back, but this is the complete series of it. So I think some of the episodes were missing on the last one. This is a really fun, though, 70s show, really crazy, with crazy music. And, you know, if you like that kind of weird stuff, you also like seeing, like, animal actors, total old-school stuff with animals. Because you don't see a lot of shows anymore with monkeys in costumes and things like that. This is kind of like a total thing of the past. I mean, at Universal Studios, you sometimes, when they have the monkey there at the theme park, they have the monkey come out, like, in out jackets and stuff like that. But you don't see that much anymore. Now, the last two I got is from Mondo Macabre and Macabro, and it's Countess per Preverse. Perverse, per, count as perverse, and it's from the director, um, who was it? It was Jess Franco, who also did the movie that I really liked, um, Faceless, you know, Destination Nowhere, and I forget the rest of it. Um, but I, I always wonder, too, if face, face, uh, the Faceless was actually shot in English or, you know, dubbed over. I never could tell that. But um, basically, though, this one is in French, and it's about a girl that ends up trying to look for her sister. And I got kind of confused with a couple aspects of it. But she goes to this island, and somehow she washes up nude on the island. I was getting confused with some of the stuff that was happening. But she ends up washing up on the island, and there's a couple there. And they end up, you know, taking her in and, like, you know, rescuing her and all that kind of stuff. And they end up taking her to this island. And basically the island is a older guy and his girlfriend, and they're basically like perverts. And they, um... You know, it's basically like surviving the game and those kind of things. They basically hunt the women and kill them and then eat them. A very strange movie. Like I said, too, a little bit confusing. I got kind of confused with some stuff. The coolest aspects of this movie, truthfully, were some of the buildings. Like the building, the main place where the couple lived, was one of the coolest buildings. And like the staircase they went down was like those ones in books. You know, like all the steps. Like I had never seen anything like that. You know, and that was pretty cool. The last one is something that I have a short film in that's out, um, I think, uh, sometime in June. I'll put the link, though, so you can pre-order it. It's Treasure Chest of Horrors. I think it's June 16th. Not 100% sure. I'm never great with the dates. But um, Treasure Chest of Horrors, though, is like an 80s-style movie. All, like It's all done like shot on video 80s films. And my short film's on there. And I also appear in one of the other segments. This is a really fun one, though, to check out. So definitely pre-order that one now. And also, for pre-orders, definitely pre-order Girls Going Dead Now. And it's in an unrated version. Now, there's going to be an unrated one. And then down the line, there's going to be an R-rated one. So definitely pre-order Girls Gone Dead. And I'll put the link for the pre-order for that. And the Haunting of Whaley House, the asylum film that I'm in. That one, pre-order that one at the end of July, which comes out of July as well. Same with Girls Gone Dead. And also, Theater of the Drange. Another anthology, when I talked about that in the last update, I'm going to talk about these ones a lot as they're coming out. Pretty that one now as well, if you'd like. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for subscribing, and I'll see you guys probably in about two weeks or so in the next update. Okay.